some states that have increased their testing criteria. So as of this week, New South Wales is also testing um, in centres or re- areas where there have been outbreaks of community transmission. In, in some cases, for example, in Canberra, they are doing some random sampling of people that don't fully meet the criteria but turn up in testing clinics and have symptoms. But still, there is not a very widespread testing of all of those with symptoms. Testing in general in an epidemic serves two functions. One is to diagnose and identify cases that will require monitoring and immediate isolation and uh, contact tracing. The other one is what we call surveillance, which is to be sure that we are not missing areas of local transmission due to strict testing criteria. It is clear that we will find cases where we look for them. And at the moment, criteria have been relatively restringent, just focused on return travelers and their contacts. But as we see the cases decline, there is the risk that there could be a small but increasing number of cases that are due to local transmission. To be able to detect those promptly, we need to do some type of sentinel testing or sampling populations. We could randomly choose suburbs and test everyone in those suburbs. Now, that is not very practical in that we don't yet have unlimited testing capacity. But a way to do that is to choose some suburbs, potentially those where we already know there is community transmission, and then test um, everyone that comes in with symptoms. There is increasing evidence that the viral particles can be found in feces. Potentially, they might be detected earlier than the nasal swabs become positive. And there is some evidence that perhaps they might also linger for a bit longer in feces compared to these other um, throat swabs. Having said that, it's still unclear whether these viral particles detected in feces are infectious. So I think more work needs to be done. The Australian Academy of Science. Because questions need answers.